Thank you for joining me for another edition of Alive and Kicking on Location. I am Lisa Marie Benz, your hostess with the mostest, and I am so happy to be here today with my friend Bill Barbarino, as I call him. And we are here today to do the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge that is sweeping the nation. And the reason we're doing this is to raise more money for ALS research. And Bill Barbarino and I have been friends for many years, and he was just recently diagnosed with ALS. So Dr. Weir's Vicky here, who's going to take the challenge today, is going to tell us all about Bill's story and about ALS in itself, because it really is a debilitating disease. So welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thanks for having me. And of course, you're located here at uh, the Brain and Spine Institute of Port Orange, 1211 Dunlawton Avenue. And we both know that Dr. Weir's Vicky gives good spinal taps. Right, Bill? <laughs> we both have one. <laughs> so if you have to have one, you want to see Dr. Timothy Wiersbicki. So <laughs> anyway, um, Dr. Wiersbicki, so tell us about Bill. I mean, Bill and I used to work together for a wonderful company called Fiscal Information. There are many people here today to support Bill and his cause. And that's why we're here today is to support Bill and his cause. <laughs> So, but, um, you know, I, ha I had lost touch with Bill for a while, and then when I got back in town and met with him, and he told me that he was just diagnosed in March. So, and so it's very, a very progressive disease, I see. It is. It is. We met in October, if I'm not mistaken, of 2013, and he had had neurologic symptoms since July, and, and the, as the story went, he had had a dental procedure, and then shortly thereafter, he became slurred in his speech, and at, at first thought, naturally, there was some relationship, and as time passed before our meeting, he developed other symptoms in his left arm, and he had muscular twitches, and was having some trouble swallowing. So when I met him, he was walking and ambulating. He didn't require a cane or a wheelchair. Came into our office with a slurry speech pattern, but we could understand him, and he was still uh, maintaining good swallowing skills, wasn't losing weight. And uh, as, as the months passed between October and uh, roughly around the time frame when his diagnosis occurred in, in early 2014, his, his condition deteriorated significantly. As, as, as you can see now, he's, he's requiring a wheelchair and he's no longer able to speak with us uh, outside of a, a communicator device, which we don't have here today. And so what exactly is ALS? And I mean, we mo most of us know it as Lou Gehrig's disease because Lou Gehrig died of it when he was only 38 years old. But, and that kind of brought it to the forefront. But what exactly causes it? Well, the, uh, the uh, ALS stands for uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which is a um, pathologic description of the injuries that are occurring inside the, central, the peripheral nervous system to the uh, nerves, the motor nerves. And so uh, there's different uh, phraseology to describe the condition, but motor neuron disease is collectively uh, a group of conditions that involves uh, injury, uh, and uh, deterioration of the motor nerves. And so uh, ALS is a form of motor neuron disease where both the upper and the lower parts of the, the um, circuitry are involved. And that's basically what this, our, our human body is designed, just like a circuit. And so we have to connect our brain to our body uh, to control our muscular movements and not inappropriately twitch and also not inappropriately lose muscle mass. And the process uh, involves uh, injuries uh, diffusely within this system and so you can no longer connect your brain to your body and so most uh, if not all uh, ALS patients have intact sensorium their brain operates in a cognitive sense very very normally they uh, don't feel uh, any sensory symptoms in the skin they have control of um, their autonomic nervous system uh, or the natural uh, ability to breathe and to, to have heart rate uh, controlled but uh, their muscles don't work because of the, uh, the injury to the motor neuron system. Um, there's still a lot to be, to be learned about the cause, but the, um, you know, the things that we do know so far, there's, a, there's a, uh, definitely a genetics to the condition. Uh, there's um, uh, at least 12 to 15 different gene uh, flaws or mutations that are uh, felt to be involved in um, the ability to treat these are naturally still uh, in their infancy. We don't have cure of it for restorative ways to fix this, uh, but we're, we're making inroads um, uh, on a yearly basis. We um, know of um, uh, 
you know, as far as the, you know, the breakdown of how the condition affects the, the population, there's uh, it's roughly you know, 10 to 15,000 individuals in the United States who have ALS, uh, confirmed diagnosis of ALS. Uh, it's a prevalence of about three to four people per 100,000 population. And so it's not a lot of numbers, but they're, um, you know, that's, um, you know, if you think of worldwide numbers, it's much bigger. And that's only what we know. There's probably more individuals out there. Um, about 10% of these people have a def uh, definitive uh, inheritance uh, pattern um, in, their, in their analysis. Uh, what, we, what we think, however, is that the remaining individuals probably also have a genetic um, predisposition for the condition, and, uh, whether that's purely um, gene-driven or also environmental, there's uh, uh, yet to be seen. Uh, some interesting uh, correlations, for instance, in the um, Gulf War, uh, there were um, a number of individuals who developed ALS who, who were uh, fighting in the 91 Gulf War, and so you know, that environmental or toxic exposure um, theory is, is uh, partially born from it, uh, some of the observations like that. Yeah, I read that in my research, that you know it could be environmental factors, mm -hmm. and they're still researching it. So. Correct, yeah, heavy metal intoxication, pesticides, there's mm -hmm. uh, quite a few theories, um, viral theories, inflammatory. Um, they haven't all been substantiated or, substantiated or proven, but uh, there's, there's been um, observations of individuals and trends of cases in, in these populations. But uh, men seem to get the condition more than women, by a ratio of roughly one and a half to one, uh, usually white males, um, although all races are um, uh, able to uh, develop the condition. Uh, there's uh, usually an uh, uh, age bracket in the 60s, that's a typical. Okay, so how is ALS diagnosed exactly? Uh, it's, a, it's a difficult diagnosis, I will say. Um, you know, Bill was a, a fairly typical patient because there were um, other uh, extenuating circumstances or findings that you know let us down uh, paths thinking other things might be involved, and that's typically how it goes. Uh, there is no one test that will confirm the diagnosis of ALS. It's a constellation of tests and uh, ruling out conditions that resemble or mimic ALS. So in his, in his case, he had the dental procedure, and so there was some thought that there may have been an inflammatory basis, and uh, that didn't pan out. It would have been a much easier thing to deal with, obviously. Um, he had, through the testing, uh, a mass on his tongue that we found. And because of his speech involvement, and at the time that was very much the, the main clinical issue, we, we thought that the mass may have had something to do with this. Uh, as he developed weakness in his extremities, however, it became clear that the mass wasn't the only story. And that turned out to be uh, an inflammatory problem that had no bearing whatsoever on his condition. But his testing um, included a spinal tap, since you mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, imaging of the brain and the spinal cord. He had uh, testing that I performed here in the office uh, called electromyography, uh, which is a test of the uh, peripheral nervous system, uh, which was uh, actually very instrumental in his diagnosis. He went to University of Florida Shands for a second opinion, had <clears throat> all kinds of people involved with this case there, myriad of blood tests, breathing tests, swallowing tests, um, probably missing a few dozen tests, right Bill? So there's a whole bunch of tests that take place to finally get the verdict type of thing? Correct, correct. And how long does that take, about two weeks to a month to get the... Well, we started this in October, and his diagnosis, as I was uh, reviewing records recently, you know, was somewhere in that time frame of March to May, so it, uh, a number of months, and it's, it's, uh, it's very laborious. Um, but, uh, it it you know, is necessary for, for clarification. And there are uh, literally dozens of conditions that resemble ALS, so um, you know, you, there's a lot of places to look. And what kind of medication is he taking now to help him? You know, the, there's, there's only, uh, at this point, a single FDA-approved drug for ALS called Rilutec. And we spoke of uh, the drug when I first um, broke news to him, and we weighed the pros and cons of whether the medication would be beneficial, and he wasn't... Uh, 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 fav it wasn't favorable to him to, to utilize the drug. And the drug is, um, I think, you know, in my own personal opinion, provides fairly modest benefit. It's uh, you know, purportedly a three to six month uh, life expectancy prolonger uh, at best. And, and that um, you know, requires a lot of blood monitoring, liver function enzymes to be 
be tested. So they're, you know, it's not an uncomplicated medication. So um, I've, I've not had real good success with it, and hopefully we'll have new medicines um, developed so that we can we can do something about this condition. Well, with all the money that we're raising with the ice bucket challenge, I think that there's a lot of hope. I, I'm hopeful too. Hopefully. Now, what, what is uh, Bill's future now, right now as it stands? Um, you know, he's, he's being cared for uh, by, by nurses and, uh, you know, he's in, in a, you know, in a sense kind of at the end stage of, of his ALS. Um, and he and I have spoken about this candidly, so this, this should be um, shocking news to him. But we, you know, we do see, unfortunately, a fair percentage of patients expire from their condition. And uh, you know, usually within the first two to three years of diagnosis, uh, very unusual to have someone uh, live beyond 10 years. Usually under 10 percent. And I have, I think, a single patient in my practice currently who's been diagnosed uh, beyond that date. So you know, he's uh, being supported, and we've talked about uh, end-of-life issues. I've talked about uh, using artificial feeding and breathing, and he's not uh, of the mind that he would like to pursue those, uh, which I understand. Mm -hmm. we're, we're taking care of them the best we can right now. And what would you say is the um, percentage of people here in Volusia County that you have diagnosed with ALS? What percentage of people in Volusia County? A, a very small percentage. I, I have in my practice um, probably about five patients currently uh, who are living ALS patients okay. um, out of you know, a number of thousand of patients, so relatively small. I'm thinking that we got to get you in a networking group. You know, where they can meet once a month or something. Yes, I, that would be a great idea. <laughs> okay, so we're all here to take the, the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, and Dr. Wearsbicki is going to be the first one. <laughs> so we're going to move outside, and we're going to, Bill and I are going to dump this over Dr. Wearsbicki's head. My pager's going off. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Yeah, that's good. Okay. That's good right there. Wherever, whatever you can do. Wait, hold on. I got your best shot. Oh, thanks. If you put that on Facebook, you're dead. What if I dump them? Okay, you ready? We're ready. Ready? <laughs> that was nice and slow. That was slow. <laughs> there wasn't anything fast about that. That wasn't as tall as that slow. <laughs> <laughs> she drugged that out just as long as she could. She drugged that out. <laughs> all right, so all the fiscal girls come up here. Let's give Bill, Bill a big hug and kiss. And thank you, Dr. Wearsbicki, for being here. Can somebody take a picture for me? Can somebody take a picture? Oh, good. And then you'll Facebook it for us. Take one yep. for me. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. So, Come on, Charlie. Be sure to donate to ALS for the cause. We gotta take the challenge to find a cure for all the people who have ALS and Gehrig's disease. And we wanna let Phil Barbarino know how much we love him. So let's give him a big kiss. Thank you for watching Alive and Kicking on Location. Be sure to become a subscriber too. And stay healthy, right, Doc? Right. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Let's hear a hand here for everybody. Yay! Everybody get your hands up. Shake it. Work it out, Doc.